Welcome to the EOB Podcast, where we talk about the weekend box office and the new openings this week. I'm Benno, and joining me is Sen Duong. Hey, Sen, you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right, so um, over the weekend, we see the uh, new Ghostbusters release in theaters. Mm -hmm. The Paul Feig, uh, Melissa McCarthy reboot of the uh, 80s movie. And then there's uh, another movie uh, called The Infiltrator. And... um, uh, I guess both movies kind of open to where we had it. Yeah, um, why don't we just start off then? Okay, so coming in number one is The Secret Life of Pets. It pulled in about $50 million over the weekend. Only experienced a 51% drop-off, which is an amazing hold for a movie that opened above $100 million. And budget's only $75 million, so yeah. And after two weeks, it uh, has already grossed $203 million, and like you said, most films that open this huge usually tend to drop off in the uh, close to the 60% range. You know, like Finding Dory or experiencing low 50% drop off. And I think Finding Dory was like high 40% drop off. So uh, re- really good host. Yeah, I guess it which just, just goes to show the, I think, the quality of these uh, family animation. Yeah, the thing with this is in general, family films tend to hold better and are ladier because kids... When they see something and they like it, they want to see it over and over and over again. We, which is one of the reasons uh, family films tend to uh, have better multipliers. Yeah, and you know, The Secret Life of Pets and, and Finding Dory, despite their record-breaking uh, opening weekends, didn't experience the usual low 60% drop off. Right, right. And um, like we say, we predicted low for this movie. We thought this movie would probably open in the 40s to 50s. But it doubled our projections. Yeah, yep, it did. And even on the second weekend, it's still beating our projections. All right, and like I say, you know, we're not giving Universal's animation arm Illumination enough credit. They make these animations for relatively cheap, you know, about in the 70 uh, to 80 million range, and then they have these huge grosses. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I wonder how they're able to do it. But I guess it's just by not being state of the art. I mean, they you know their animation you know you don't look to them and say wow you know we haven't seen that in um you know animation before the secret life of pets they look like the minions right uh because they use some off the, the software uh and that their animation is good enough right yeah um I, I think that's one of the reasons the other reason might be <clears throat> no might just be that uh maybe their uh, head of illumination just put a cap on it hey you got to make this for $75 million, which is the same budget as Minions, which is the same budget as uh, Despicable Me. So maybe that's that's how he's doing it. And although the voice talents or um, decent names, maybe they're not paying them as much as other studios are paying. You know, like Toy Story, in the Toy Story movies, for example, like you know, Tom Hanks gets like, I don't know, 15, 20 million or whatever it is, just to do voice work. So maybe... <laughs> Probably 10. I, I'm not sure about 15 to 20. That's like live action. Live yeah, action yeah. Work. so maybe that's that's how they're doing it. Um, I don't know. The, yeah, their ability to con- control costs. Like you say, capping the budget at around 75, 80 million. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, they managed to pull this off. Right. Okay, so how about we move to number two? Ghostbusters. It pulled in about forty-six million over the weekend. You had it around what fifty-five? Yeah. And yeah. I had about fifty. I mean, your initial projection was about forty-five. Yeah, my initial. I should have stuck with my initial. Always stick with your first, uh, <laughs> first gut feeling. I mean, this is uh, around what I, I think what most people had it. But again, even though Melissa McCarthy and Paul Fates, um best opening in their collaboration or among their individual films, it's still the biggest opening. But the, the only problem is the budget is so high; it's like 144 million. In general, um, you know these big openings, even at 50 million, they tend to, you know, like Divergent, uh, the first Divergent film. Or you know, G.I. Joe films that open to 50 million eventually only end up doing 130, 140. This one, we'll have to see as a comedy. We'll see if it holds up better. If it holds up better, then it can, you know, make back the 144 domestic. But uh, if it doesn't, it could be a little bit behind and would have to rely on uh, overseas, the overseas market. Yeah, see, the thing is, I doubt this Ghostbusters will make up its budget domestic. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it's one of those movies that holds up well. Mm-hmm. 
and overseas uh, the problem is that you know like since China is such a big market and they don't like supernatural stuff so I don't think Ghostbusters is going to be released in China here's the thing it's not that they don't like supernatural stuff it's that they don't allow supernatural stuff so I I think same thing right they're not releasing it there yeah I think Ghostbusters was denied because of uh, the paranormal elements I remember reading an article saying it's not shown in, in China in China, they don't allow any anything that involves supernatural, like ghosts. <laughs> so that's why you haven't seen any films coming out of China that has any elements of ghosts. Wow, there's some supernatural stuff. Yeah, know, like, just a little tiny bit of supernatural uh, stuff. Kind of, kind of like their own fairy tales, right? With the gods and yeah. what have you. And yeah, but not... I don't see what the difference is, but I guess ghosts is a, is a line that they want to draw. <laughs> yeah, so uh, no ghosts. Right, right. So Ghostbusters definitely not released in China. So it limits the it box eliminates office potential like a overseas. huge chunk. You know, a huge, huge chunk of their box box office potential. Right. Because right now, like according to one executive, he said you have the U.S., you have the China, and then you have the rest of the world. Those are the three separate pieces. Now, Ghostbusters only has two. So the, you know, a major piece of the pie is gone. Right, right. So I guess like the question is, will there be another Ghostbusters? Well, we'll have to see in the coming weeks because films starring Paul Fig and Melissa McCarthy tend to have good multipliers, tend to hold up well, and comedies in general tend to hold up well. So we'll see which way this this will go. And another sign I see is a lot of the demographics are women. The only problem with the woman demographic is you know, like Sex in the City, they they wash out. That, that's the only negative thing I see. You, you know, the Sex in the City films they wash out, and then and then by the second weekend, you know, there's a seventy uh, percent drop off with the Sex in the City film. So I'm not, you know, I wonder if that's going to affect this because the demo is like fifty five percent women. I think we'll know for sure by the second weekend to see yeah. how huge the drop off is. Yeah. Um, is it like you say, very front loaded because of the female audience, as you said? Or is it gonna stay in, you know, or linger in theaters for a while? Um, and like I say, I doubt the movie will make back its budget here. Uh, yeah. It doesn't have that big of a opening, so that means the interest level is not there. Um, yeah. So... Well, 46 million in general is nothing to scoff at, but the reviews are pretty good. Uh, what's the cinema score? I think it was only about average, right? Uh, yeah, let's see. The cin- cinema score is a B, plus, so. Which is yeah, kind of average. average. But reviews is kind of solid, 73%. We'll see which way this goes. If it falls up, uh, uh, you know, as well as other Melissa McCarthy and Paul Fake films, then it could make back his money. But if it doesn't, then you'll have to rely on overseas. And You're right. Like I say, I, I doubt that it'll make up this budget here. So so assuming that it doesn't, what, what happens next? I mean, Sony is already, as usual, is already like high-fiing each other and, you know, they're like, hey, we got sequels planned, this is a huge, <laughs> you know, win. And then even as box office analysts are like, uh, we're not sure yet, 46 million, it might not make back as a, it might not get to 144 million. And also, you don't have China overseas, so, hey. <laughs> but of course, like, as usual, they're always, uh, I think it's a Sony executive, so always like, man, they... They're happy with everything. I guess you have to be, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Or else you'll be drinking from the bottle. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. So here, my money is on, on not, not yeah. making it back as budget. Yeah. Uh, it depends a lot on overseas without China. You know? Yeah. Um, so uh, we'll see from there. But I'm sure that, that they want to have more move, Ghostbusters movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, like you say, we'll, we'll see with the, the coming weeks. Uh, see how which way this one will go. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to say. I think, yeah, I'm going to put my money on it not quite getting to 144. Yeah, right, right. And even the original Ghostbusters movies, right, with the original cast, it only lasts two movies. Well, but a a lot of that has to do with Bill Murray, though. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) He's been, uh, he's been very picky. (laughs) Right, right, right. But still, they rebooted the movie, it didn't... Uh, you know, even though it opened to 46, not, you know, it should open in the 50s uh, for, for it to have a chance. But, yeah, with that budget, uh, it, it know, needs to be in yeah, the yeah. 50s. All right, well, we will see. Keep an eye on this movie, and we'll talk about some more in the upcoming weeks. Right. Okay, how about we move along to number three, The Legend of Tarzan. 
pulled in 11 million over the weekend, um, you know, experienced another low drop off of 47%. And in its third weekend, uh, so far it made 103 million. But hey, you know what? The budget's 180. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a movie that everyone expected to bomb, but it didn't. But it didn't perform that well either. You know, it just performed decent. Uh, yeah. But the albatross is that 180 million budget. Right. So worldwide, it hasn't opened in China yet, which is a good sign because worldwide it has already closed 193 million. Uh, I think at 180 million to break even uh, on a theatrical level, you'll have to make you know, about 360 million worldwide. It's at 193 million so far worldwide, and you know it's gonna have trouble getting to uh, 360 un unless it does gangbusters in China. If it doesn't, it just uh, follows a long string of Tarzan movies that then do that well, you know, in theaters. Uh, yeah, with the exception of Disney's uh, animated one. Right, right, right. That's too bad. I think you know one of the problems is this might be that um, well, who, actually, it's not a good example of me. Because, you know, despite uh, Zootopia doing so well, Secret Life of Pets is doing just as well, if not better. So, you know, I was going to say, hey, you know, the Jungle Book beat the Legend of Toss and to the punch. But, you know, hey, the Secret Life of Pets doing, you know, even slightly better than Zootopia, despite, sim you know, similar concept. Yeah, so Legend of Toss and what are those films that people expected to tank pretty badly, but it didn't. But at the same time, it still looks like it's going to lose money on its current track. So uh, no Legend of Tarzan 2. <laughs> <laughs> right. The Legend is finished with one movie. Yeah. Okay, moving along. Number four, Finding Dory. It pulled in 11 million in its fifth weekend, 47% drop off. And so far, domestic is 445. And it is right now the highest grossing animated movie, right? Yeah, of all time. Which puts Pixar back at the top, you know, until Frozen 2 comes out. Oh, yeah. Well, we gotta let that go. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. Oh, okay. Yeah, so worldwide, Finding Dory is uh, at 722 million, which is pretty pretty impressive considering it didn't do uh, that well in China. Well, in relative terms, uh, in China, it only did like 38 million. Uh, compared to Zootopia, you know, Zootopia made like 240 million in China or something. Right, right. I mean, studios rather they do well domestic than overseas or in China because they get more money from the domestic box office. Right. That's the odd thing, like I said uh, in previous weeks, uh, Chinese audiences just don't quite get uh, Pixar. Because that 38 million is actually one of the better performing Pixar films in China. But, you know, other studios like Kung Fu Panda or you know, like Zootopia or e even uh, some of the DreamWorks films have performed better. All right. How about we move along to number five? Mike and Dave need wedding dates. Uh, in the second weekend, it grows 7.5 million. I experienced a nearly 55% drop off and uh, made 31 million so far. Yeah, at a budget of 33 million. So, you know, kind of a modest hit for Fox. Well, we modest hit. <laughs> yeah, modest hit. And it's uh, one of these uh, all rated comedies um, with the. Uh, I guess it's, uh, like I say, it's, it's similar to Wedding Crashers, except uh, it, it has female counterpart. You know, this is kind of like a female counterpart to Wedding Crashers, and it has uh, Zach Efron, Anna Kendrick, Aubrey Plaza, Stephen Root, Adam Devine. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not the kind of movie that you can count on to make money overseas because comedies are hard to translate in the international market. So this one would have to uh, make back his money on video. Right, and you can only milk Zach Efron's abs for so long. I mean, it's like you know, almost every movie is right there, shirtless, showing yeah. his abs. Uh, yeah, and obviously, you know, considering how many butts he has uh, before Mike and Dave, he's got to show more than just his abs now. Uh, acting chops, maybe? <laughs> yeah, by showing more, I mean, in other areas, like acting. Yeah. Right, or, or comedic. I don't know, yeah. he's, he's been doing all these comedies, and it's just not doing that well. <laughs> Yeah, the thing is, he, he did well with that romance movie, but uh, I wonder why he's not getting back into it. Maybe he doesn't want to be typecast as a romantic lead. Yeah, but uh, outside of that, he hasn't been doing uh, that well consistently. Okay, okay. We'll, yeah. we'll see him make a career change from comedies to more serious dramas. Yeah, or maybe he might have to hit the indie route, but, but hey, you know, not everybody has that, so. You know, right, yeah. well, you know, as long as he keeps working, he'll get there, find his niche. Yeah, or he could be like Matthew McConaughey, just crank out a romantic comedy every so often, 
collect his 20 million paycheck and then go to indies and win an oscar yep that's right he got it all yeah he got it all <laughs> <laughs> and hey matthew mcconaughey's well but matthew mcconaughey started doing indies and then people discover he has abs and pegs and he milked it with romantic comedies and then he went back into the indie world and got an oscar hey gotta pay the bills do whatever you need yeah. to do so maybe uh, Zach Efron might have to go that well. Right, right. But it, you know, not everyone has the acting chops. So. Okay, so uh, moving along to number six is the Purge election year. It pulled in uh, six million in its third weekend, and uh, you know, experienced a fifty percent drop off. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's doing extremely well considering its ten million budget uh, yeah. right now. Domestic is seventy one million so far. Yeah, and here's the thing with the fifty one percent drop off for horror films or thrillers. That's a uh, you know all the horror thriller genre. That's a very good hold because they, they tend to uh, drop off by you know sixty percent, seventy percent in the range. So the purge is. You know, in relative terms, it's holding up pretty well, and it looks like it's going to be the best performing uh, purge, the best performing film in the franchise. Yeah, that's what happened to in the, the second purge. It performed better than the first purge, and this third movie it will do even better. Yeah. yeah, the second movie did 72 million, and this is already at 71 million, and it's still going relatively strong, and looks like it'll probably grow like in the 85 million range, maybe, uh, when yeah. it's all said and done. And if it continues to hold up, it might even possibly do 90. This is like the Saw series. They might get to like 8 or 9 of them. Right, right. <laughs> you know, considering how cheap it costs to make, uh, they're, yeah. they're probably going to keep the budget the same mm -hmm. and they crank out more. Yeah. And, you know, I guess Mike Epps uh, was uh, onto something when he spoofed The Purge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. How about we move on to number seven, uh, Central Intelligence. It's still hanging in theaters and its fifth weekend, it pulled in 5.3 million. Uh, another low drop off of 34% and it crossed the 100 million barrier. Domestic is 117. And let's see, worldwide take right now is 180. Right, at a budget of just 50 million. Um, again, of all the films in the top 10, this is the one that's been holding up the best. Every week is around 30, uh, mid -30s mid-30s at the drop-off and one of the reasons might be that it's the only action comedy in, in you know in, in, in theaters you know if you're a guy and you want to hang out with other guys this is like probably one of the only films you can go to what you don't want to go to mike and dave need wedding dates probably not okay right <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so yeah, uh, that's why Dwayne Johnson is paid twenty million dollars for you know his films is because uh, you know his film performed. Yeah, although I'm not sure if he got twenty million for this. The budget no, is, let's, let's just yeah, the yeah, budget is yeah. only fifty million, so <laughs> could be that most of it went yeah. to him. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Yeah, number eight is one of the new releases um, last weekend. It's called The Infiltrator. It put in about five million. Uh, you know, about where I had it, you say three. Mm -hmm. But it kind of performed better than what we expect. I thought it would be closer to your number than mine. Yeah, it's a film that's based on a, was it a book or? It's based on a real life event uh, starring uh, Brian Cranston. Uh, he's like some kind of secret agent. One of those guys that have to, uh, you know, live a double life. One as a real life uh, family man. And then in his job, he has to pretend to be some really crooked, really nasty, really bad drug dealer person. <laughs> oh no, or is it, uh, or does it have to do with uh, the financial industry? <laughs> That's the thing, it's like nobody knows about it. That's why it only made five million over the weekend. Uh, we, we can say it's just a more serious take on true lies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, <laughs> the reviews were, were okay, I you know, 66% on the tomato meter, I think, uh, with these kind of films, you kind of want to be in the, you know, better review in the 80s or high 70s. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's just, you know, certain films like indies movies, which this is really, um, even though it opens low, it, it stays in theater. And I don't think The Infiltrator is one of those movies which will stay in theaters because, like you said, the reviews. Yeah, yeah. so we'll, we'll see. It is about an uh, undercover agent trying to uh, infiltrate a, you know, a drug cartel, drug business. Yeah, so it did better than we expected. Way better than what I expected and about where you had it. Right, right, right. And like you say, for indie movies, you want it to, the reviews to be in the 90s. Yeah. I'm not sure what the budget is for this, though, but it doesn't look like it's that high, so they might make a profit. Okay. 
Uh, number nine is the BFG. It pulled in 3.7 million over the weekend. Oh, so far it only made a 47 million. And a budget of 140 million, and uh, even the worldwide figure is only at 64 million. It's not looking good. Uh, it's gonna lose a lot of money. It's like one of Steven's uh, skill books of weird bombs. Yeah, I just it just seems like there's no really no interest in the BFG. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's one of these popular novels, right? Uh, yeah, more popular in uh, England though. I think. Uh huh. And they somehow felt that they need to throw a 140 million budget at this. I think it's it's along the lines of kind of like Peter Pan's and Hook, those kind of movies mm -hmm. where they go into this you know fantastical world of giants, fairies, and you know. But this one has a a, a giant. Right, right, right. And a human human eating giant. Maybe uh, it's telling Steven Spielberg something. Don't do fantasy. <laughs> no, it's not that don't do fantasy. R remember when I say that you know the movie is kind of British, so those movies always have trouble here. You know, you could say that uh, Paddington, kind of one of the exceptions, but you know Paddington is you know it's a bear. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's kind of it's kind of different. It's more familiar, I guess, yeah, right. to um, audiences here and worldwide. And yeah, I wonder how popular the BFG is. Um... Sure, it's popular in England, but is it that popular in, in the U.S.? And they're betting on the Steven Spielberg name yeah. to pull in people for people who are unfamiliar with the property. And, you know, Steven Spielberg has been doing dramas, with historical dramas in the last 10 years. So mm -hmm. maybe it changed the perception of them. Right. Like I said, when, when's the last time that, uh, you know, young people are excited about a Steven Spielberg movie? Right. Since he's been doing all these serious dramas, historical dramas. Uh, thrillers yeah, right we know about steven spielberg right what he ha what he have you know has done but people who are now coming into these movies discovering movies might not know him so that's why wh when i say that his name might not carry that much weight for the audience for this uh movie yeah yeah you know, until he breaks out with the, the next um indiana jones movie yeah. or the, the next film that's similar to you know like an action like a fun action adventure type movie yeah but i think he kind of moved on from those though judging by his body of work uh, recently i'm not sure because when they talk to him it always seems like he wants to do another indiana jones but it seems like it's hard to get everyone together type of thing but mm -hmm. when when they interview him he always seemed excited to make another indiana jones so Seems like he, he wants to do another one of these fun action adventure type movies, but uh, I guess maybe the, you know, all the logistics and negotiations take a while, you know, or maybe he hasn't quite came up with a project that he's, uh, feels good enough to uh, make a go on. I think we can blame this on George Lucas. <laughs> I mean, the, uh, the Indiana Jones movie. Remember, Lucas comes up with the story, Spielberg directs it. Yeah. And Harrison Ford just shows up, collect a paycheck. Right. Yep. <laughs> and now that George Lucas is kind of retired, we don't know. If... It's not kind of, he is retired. Yeah, yeah. He's living the good life. Yeah. And now they're rebooting Indiana Jones uh, to a younger crowd. So. Yeah, so I'm not sure how well that will work though. Yeah, when it works, it seems easy, like a Harrison Ford guy. But no, Harrison Ford, people like Harrison Ford aren't people that you can just randomly throw anyone in. And, you know, when it works, it seems easy. But he's one of those icons, you know, cinema icons that, you know, only pops up once in a while. Indiana Jones, sure, a lot of it is Steven Spielberg's direction and George Lucas's uh, imagination. But the person who uh, makes the whole thing work has that personality and funness to it, you know, that adventurousness to it as a uh, Harrison Ford. And like Jackie Chan, he's not, he's not one of those guys that you can just throw anyone in and turn him into Indiana Jones. Right, right. It's pretty much like someone that people want to pay money to see. And those are rare. Yeah, the closest person to him that we have right now is Chris Pratt. If they put him in Indiana Jones, I can totally see it because he, you know, he has that kind of wise crack, that fun, that, that you know, that sense of adventure in him. You know, I can totally see him doing Indiana Jones. But you know, the guys like him or kind of like when you find him, it's a, it's a surprise. It's not like. You know, you can just groom anyone into it. Right, and really, when those guys, they're not really acting. Yeah. They're just like playing themselves, <laughs> kind of like Harrison <laughs> Ford is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Although Chris Pratt did um, sort of transform himself into <laughs> that guy. From uh, Parks and Recreation, he's, he was kind of overweight. He wasn't the Chris Pratt that everyone knew in the Guardians of the Galaxy. 
All right, so maybe he will be cast in, but I'm not sure how it goes. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll give uh, whoever they put in there the benefit of the doubt. All right, right. Okay, rounding out the top 10 is Independence Day Resurgence. It pulled in about 3.5 million over the weekend. So far, it only grows 98 million. It will pass 100 million uh, this week. Yeah, but it's not going to make... Definitely not get anywhere close to its uh, 165 million budget. Uh, continues a long string of expensive sequels that underperform. Worldwide is at 338 million. Uh, worldwide is going to make a profit, but will it be enough for a sequel? I don't think so because it's mostly looked at as a disappointment. But the thing is, it's like yeah, this movie, um, you know, it's a sequel without Will Smith, right? They try yeah. to make one. Uh, without Will Smith, maybe because he was asking for too much money. I don't buy that, that he's trying to do smaller movies. And uh, domestically, it's not a franchise that people want to continue on, judging by the take, right? Uh, so it only made uh, 98 million so far. Mm -hmm. And if they make another one, you can only expect that number to drop somewhat. Yeah, but not this much. Because like the first film, worldwide, the first film did like around 850 million. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this one looks like it's going to top off at 350 million. You know, that's a huge drop off. And even domestically, the first film made, you know, over 300 million. And this one domestically looks like it'll top off in the 100, in the 100 million range. And like you said, with Will Smith, it was probably mostly about money. Because, I mean, that guy's been cranking out sequels to, uh, to a bad boy. So you know that it's not. And Men in Black. Yeah, and Men in Black. I mean, Men in Black was at least well reviewed, but bad boys. Other than money, there's no reason to, uh, make any more of those. <laughs> So if he's willing to do sequels to those, I don't see why he wouldn't do sequels to this other than, you know, money. It's definitely not based on quality. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I like that script, but uh, no, uh, yeah, like I said, they're not gonna make an, another one because domestically it's not gonna do a hundred million, right? It's just just yeah. kind of like the Turtles movie, the first movie. Then, well, the only difference with Independence Day from Turtles is Turtles. I don't think they'll make another sequel unless they lower the budget uh, drastically. But the mm -hmm. great thing about Independence Day is because Will Smith is not in it, I can see the possibility of them doing another one. Except with Will Smith. It's kind of like the Fast and Furious films where they did 2 and 3 without Vin Diesel. And then when they put Vin Diesel back and, you know, Justin Lin, it blew up. It completely rebooted the franchise. This definitely showed the studio that Will Smith was a big part of it. And if you don't pay Will Smith, you're going to end up with, you know, a film that only makes a third of what the original made. Without Will Smith, I don't see any more Independence Days. <laughs> but if Will Smith signs on, I can see there being another one. Yeah, I, I can see them take that route, yeah. but will they though? Because like, all right, they're going to lose money on this movie, Yeah, right? I think if Will Smith so. says yes, they will. But it depends on how much they're willing to pay him and whether mm. or not, you know, Will Smith, you know, it was like, hey, the second one tanked. Why should I make a third one? Exactly, and it's been so long since the last Independence Day movie, right? Yeah. It, it took him so long to make one. That's what I'm saying. Wait, didn't they kill off his character in, in Resurgence? I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. With Hollywood, you know, with this kind of film, they can just say, haha, we lied to you. You're right. Just kidding. He was alive yeah, all the time. Yeah, we yeah, needed to yeah. protect him and, you know, put him right. in secret servers. <laughs> right, right. They found a way to clone him, you yeah. know, so right. uh, with alien technology. Right, uh, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the thing is, it's like, you know, it took them so long, 20 years, to make another Independence Day movie. And I'm not sure if they want to make a one, they should, they could, you know, like Fox would say, hey, you know, let's let's do this. If they're like really enthusiastic about making one. And with the performance of this one, I think they, they would shy away from it, right? Well, no, I think they were enthusiastic. They do, you know, when you have a film that grows 850 million, you want to make another one. Believe me, the studio really, really wants to make another one. Problem was probably getting everyone back back together and paying them the money that they want. Obviously, they, they probably weren't willing to pay whatever Will Smith wanted to pay. But, you know, I guess if Will Smith decides he wants to do another one, now he can definitely say, hey, pay me whatever I asked before. <laughs> asked for before. And add another 20 million on top. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because without me, there is no franchise. Right, right. Okay, how about we uh, go to the uh, new openings? Uh, I want to mention something about underperforming sequels. Uh, now You See Me Too, uh, you know, it underperformed like uh, many sequels during the summer, only close 60, about 64 million in the US. But it made nearly 100 million in China. And there was a news item saying that they're going to make a spin off just for the Chinese audience. 
Ah, kind of like what we suggested. Now you see me in China. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just because of how well it's doing in China, there are a lot of films here that might, you know, because China is such a huge market now, we might see this happening more often. You know, like the Need for Speed film. Need for Speed didn't do that well in the in the U.S. You know, not to want a sequel, it actually overperformed in the U.S. But it did really well uh, overseas. Um, a big chunk of it in China, and they're going with a sequel. And this is a even more interesting route because it, it made a hundred million in China, which is a you know the most of any country. And instead of doing a sequel, they're actually gonna do a spin-off. Yeah, well, which will probably feature Chinese actors, right? Yeah, probably. You know, if it's a spin-off for the for that uh, market. So I think we're gonna see more of this. Is that they're gonna cast more and more Chinese actors just for that market. Yeah, well, you know, there might be more films that are just even specifically just geared towards China. Oh yeah, they're doing that too. They're, you know, like all these studios are having like development uh, companies of, you know, having opening a branch over in China to look uh, for how to crack that market. And China is trying to, you know, crack the U.S. market. So. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Right, right, right. All right, let's, uh, like you said earlier, let's move on to uh, this week's openings. Oh yeah, we have three movies, and I think they're all going to do well. Ice Age Collision Course is the another Ice Age movie. There is the horror movie Lights Out, and uh, the Star Trek movie, Star Trek Beyond. Um, let's do the, let's start off with the biggest one, Star Wars Beyond. I mean, Star Trek, Star Trek Beyond. You think that Star Trek's going to be the bigger one? Uh, yeah, um, because the Ice Age films have uh, done progressively worse in the U.S., but what it has done progressively better is overseas. So this is another franchise that is only alive because of the overseas market, not because of the U.S. market. And since we're talking about Ice Age, I guess we might as well just do Ice Age. I mean, the first Ice Age did $176 million. In the U.S., then the second one did 195 million, and then the third one did just as well, 197 million, and then a decent drop off with the last one. Continental Drift only did 161 million, which I guess isn't too bad, but you know, a noticeable drop off is like the worst performing of the bunch. But worldwide, Continental Drift did 877 million. So this is one of those. Uh, for some odd reason, this franchise. It's huge overseas, you know, um, and even Ice Age, Dawn of the Dinosaurs, the third one, did another 887 million. The second film, Ice Age, The Meltdown, opened huge, 68 million in the U.S., but the uh, third and fourth one opened to, you know, in the 40 million range. So there's a certain consistency there, but there's definitely a drop-off domestically. But hey, who knows, it might be close. But this is one of those movies where there's a huge international market and they're cranking out another one, mainly because of the international market. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the Ice Age movies are not that expensive to make. I think they're around the 90s, 100 million range. Yeah. But, but the, the problem is that it's released in a crowded period. You know, with the Secret Life of Pets, with the uh, you know uh, the other uh, children movie in theaters, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, and also at the Star Trek Beyond, right. this Ghostbusters if it holds up well, and we have to mention Finding Dory as well. So they're all targeting the same audience. Yeah, yeah, I, I do wonder if there's enough for another family film, but this one is so poorly reviewed, sixteen percent on Rotten Tomatoes so far. You know, after a significant, a decent amount of reviews. 38 reviews so far so the reviews are horrible but the trailer's funny <laughs> is it it's funny <laughs> yeah it's funny um families i wonder if they might just skip this one and go hey you know there's finding dory still out secret life of pets is still doing really well i wonder if there's enough uh, room for another one uh, that's true, but I think the Ice Age movies tend to target the older group a bit more, since their humor is more adult. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, I mean, not adult, but you know, like more gags that uh, adults could appreciate more, you know, that they won't get bored. Um, I think with the Ice Age films, it's, 
Yeah, it's um, because the films that tend to tr uh, translate well to both adults and kids tend to be um, the Pixar movies. Even The Secret Life of Pets is more of a kids and adults movie because you know a lot, a lot of adults have pets. Mm -hmm, right. So I think the Ice Age films tend to uh, tend to be pretty young too. I think adults would enjoy the uh, you know the, the Pixar films or The Secret Life of Pets more than the Ice Age franchise. But the Ice Age franchise, there's another film with talking animals. And, you know, this summer there's been Zootopia, <laughs> Secret Life of Pets, and if you count the Jungle Book, there's three of them out there, and three of them are making 300 million. <laughs> mm -hmm. But as we see in the Ice Age uh, movies, right, you tick off where the movie opened to, there, there is a kind of uh, this consistency, like you said, around the 40 million range, 50 yeah. million range. Yeah. So you, we expect this new Ice Age to make similar, right? You expect it to, but I think um, a lot of it has to do with like how the previous film was perceived, and I don't think the last film was perceived that well. So there might be a slight drop off for this one because you know, like the second Ice Age did much better than the first. I mean, the first one opened to around forty million, and the second one opened to almost seventy million. So a lot of people perceived the first Ice Age really well, so they rushed out to see the second one, and then. I don't think the second one turned out as well as they, they wanted, and so there's a significant drop off on the third one. And the fourth one, I don't think is that well perceived either, so I think this one might experience a drop off from that. But on a consistent level, they do all seem to do in the 40 million range, so. But that's probably with, with uh, not that much competition. So I'm thinking, even though the summer has so far shown that there's room for lots of talking animals movies, with all three of them doing Gangbusters, like 300 million plus, but this one is so poorly reviewed, and the Secret Life of Pets is still going so strong. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this one will do like 30 million. Wow, 30 million. Yeah. Okay. Um, who am I to go against the flow, right? Yeah. I'm probably gonna do 40 million. Okay. Sure, you could be right. You could be right too, because like you said, uh, you know, there's all these movies in theaters. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a crowded uh, um, a time to be in. You know, with all these uh, family movies. Yeah. You know, there's still the Secret Life of Pets. They're still finding Dory. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. And, and Ice Age. And even the Jungle Book, you can probably catch it in the drive-ins. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, right. So, um, yeah, let, let's let's go with forty million because it is a, a Ice Age movie. People are familiar with, with what it is, mm -hmm. right? There's that squirrel, Scrat, uh -huh. that people uh, like, seems to like. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah, for 40 million. Well, here, here's the thing. This one is by far the worst review of the bunch at uh, 16%. And you know what you mentioned in earlier weeks when you put a character in space and it means you oh. reach the end. And you yes. know, they, they put Scratch. Is that his name? Uh, Scrat. Yes, yeah, Scrat. They put Scrat in space. So you know they're reaching the end of the line here. All right, all right. I guess you, you, you're going to be right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with 30, you come with 40, we'll see. I, I can't even see it doing 25. Right, I guess they jumped the shark on this one because uh, they put a character in space. All right. <laughs> you're right, you're right, you're right. All right, let's move on to uh, Star Trek Beyond, which is uh, impressive, very impressive on one Tomatoes. After 31 reviews, it's 90% on a tomato meter, which is in line with how these films have been reviewed in the past. Uh, Star Trek 1 and 2 have both performed uh, really well with the critics well reviewed and done well uh, at the box office. I think both of them opened in the mid 40s and then end up making uh, over 200 million the previous two so No, well Star Trek Into Darkness opened to 70. Oh wow even better than the first one. Huh? Yeah yeah. But a total did they make more than the first one? The first one made gross uh, 257 domestic Into Darkness 228. Okay so Into the Darkness was more fun it. Yeah. Okay. What do you think of the perception for the second one? It seems like uh, some people were a little bit disappointed that it's too similar to The Wrath of Khan. Which it is The Wrath of Khan because, you know, it has Khan. Yeah, it is The Wrath of Khan and some people were disappointed by that. Yeah, both of the Star Trek films opened in the 70 million range. The first one opened to 75 million and the second one opened to 70 million. So. These are huge films, never mind about being fun loaded. <laughs> so this one might do similar, um, open uh, in a similar range, you know, with great reviews and all. And, you know, and Justin Lin, uh, we know what he did with the Fast and Furious franchise. And uh, that's what he's hired to do here.
Yeah. Uh, so, hey, it might be another 70 million. I'll go with what they had before. So I'll say 70 million too. Okay, you say 70 million. I'm going to go a bit lower. Okay. I'm going to probably um, 60 to 65. Okay, that's not bad either. Because I see a, a definite drop off of the in these movies. Yeah, I wonder if this will follow the trend of the summer so far of disappointing sequels. But uh, it doesn't look like it so far because the reviews are great. You know, which is hard to do for the third film. Even the Spider-Man films, which were really well reviewed by the third film, have dropped off significantly, similarly to the original X-Men franchise. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if uh, Justin Lin can work his magic here because, you know, he has to go up against uh, Abrams' uh, movies, right? Which yeah. wasn't well regarded. Uh, they, uh, they were, way, right? They were well reviewed, but I think fans were. Yeah, fans don't like his reboots because it's more like a Star Wars movie than a Star Trek movie. That's what they're saying. It's like yeah. it's all so action packed. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't say they were not well regarded. Uh, because they were well reviewed and they did open huge and they both of them did make over 200 million so i guess it, there were some complaints that by hardcore fans that it's you know maybe too you know like the second one mostly i hear that it's too similar to wrath of khan right and most of the people who've seen uh into darkness uh haven't seen the wrath of khan yeah, right. <laughs> so um i can definitely see it to not open as well yeah i can see as that the too previous two movies because uh, you know the Star Trek movies has been holding steady, judging by the two previous movies. Yeah. You know, around the two hundred million range, open to in the seventy range, and uh, and uh, the all previous will be one, well reviewed too. All will, yeah, yeah, the previous one opened five million less uh -huh. than the first movie. Yeah. This one, I think, is gonna drop uh, again as well. Okay. Well, we'll see. Okay. Yeah. Let's move on to uh, lights out. From another Fast and Furious director, James Wan. He's producing this one, right? Is he pro is he just producing? Okay. Let me take a quick look. But I think he's producing this okay. one. Okay. Not Pro Okay, he's producing, not directing. Okay, yeah, yeah you're right, uh, right. David Sandberg is directing. Okay, all right. So he's producing. He's taking the James Bloom route. Jason Bloom? <laughs> Jason Bloom route. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, he's taking the Jason Bloom route of uh, producing. Wow, amazing on uh, One Tomatoes. Well, there's just 11 reviews so far, but it's uh, 100%, uh, which is uh, kind of, you know, abnormal for these kind of films. In, in a good way, in a good way. Yeah, you know, Jason, I mean, not Jason Bloom, but James Wan, right? His horror movies are relatively well-reviewed. Yeah. And this one, the trailer does look pretty good, does look pretty scary. It, it does. It's, uh, it's similar to that, the movies that opened like a month or two ago with, you know, um, like the Indian burial ground thing. Mm -hmm. They went on a trip, they brought back some relics and, you know, and then the haunted house. Uh, but but this one is, uh, you know, similar. I mean, all these ghost movies are kind of similar, right? <laughs> um, but it's the in, in the execution and uh, the, the trailer looks really good. Yeah, um, these thrillers have done, you know, on a modest level pretty well. You know, The Conjuring 2 uh, eventually grows over 100 million. You know, The Purge is, you know, looks, is doing really well and holding up pretty well. Even The Shadows did uh, modestly well. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll go with 15. Uh, it does, the trailer does look pretty good. But you know, we have Star Trek Beyond making in the 65 to 70 million range between us. And then Ice Age, 30 to 40 million. Is there enough audience? I'll go with 10. Sure, they're going for completely different demos, but most people would go to either Star Trek or Ice Age. Right, and there's still also the other uh, movies in theaters. Yeah. So, I'm going right. with 10. Yeah, we're, I think we're going to be wrong on um, one of these. Or oh, all of them. <laughs> or oh, all of them. Yeah, which is I, actually, last funny. week you were, yeah. you were pretty good. You were dead on on uh, both of them. All right, so we'll see which one of these uh, will underperform or overperform. The one to underperform is probably Ice Age, I feel. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think. Which might be closer to where you have it at, at 30 million because, uh, like you say, character is in space. Yeah. <laughs> and I could see Lights Out being the one that can overperform. And Star Trek looks like it's going to be four wide within our range. Yeah, I just, it's it's the um, movie that people want to see, I guess. Uh, fans of the other Star Trek movies will probably want to see this movie. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have Abrams, uh, which might be a good or bad thing, depending if you're a, uh, if you're a fan of his or not. All right, so we'll we'll see uh, next week. Right, we'll see next week and Star Trek Beyond. We'll see if Justin Lin continues his magic, uh, if he can resurrect the uh, series last like year with the Fast and Furious movies. Right. Although I don't think this series needed resurrecting. <laughs> well, but it can. It needs a boost. 
maybe a slight boost. Okay, come back next week and see how we uh, did with our projections.